It's insane because every time you're gonna gr you feel like growing, you know, you need karma, good karma points. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of times, you know, it feels so good just to help people in general, anyways. But I think like the the more you help, like the more good energy you you get back from the world. Sure. And even if you don't, you help somebody. Yeah. Duck. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Flip Lab. Today I'm joined with Ramon Martinez and his brother Rodrigo. Uh, these guys I met a few years back when they first got into real estate and they were the ultimate go-givers to me. I, they pretty much gave me their entire game plan of how they set up their wholesale business, who they worked with. And I was I pretty much took that and built my own business with a lot of the information that you guys gave to me. So thank you for doing that. And um, it's a pleasure having you guys on the show. Thank you for having us, man. I was pretty excited about this. And I'm like, oh my God, my guy Ricky's speaking, doing it big, doing things everywhere, all over the country, in New Jersey, focusing. Remember on when I came to your office? What, just almost two years ago, I guess. Dude, how time flies. And that's the thing, like people have shown up, but not everyone's been able to do things with the information. I think it's individual based. Like some guys make it, some people don't. Yeah. It's crazy. So, so for the people that don't know your crazy story that you guys have, give like a quick two minute rundown of how you went from, you know, selling dogs a couple years ago to, you know, you just purchased, congrats on, you know, a million dollar plus house in beautiful North Phoenix. Thanks, man. Yeah, so it was insane, man. So I got I got fired from my job while in New York, by the way. I was at the airport, I got fired only because I was complaining. I was done with traveling, honestly. Yeah. I used to be on planes everywhere. Um, so on my way back, I didn't have any, about two, three weeks later, I didn't have any money because pretty much even if you have a good paying job, you're still living sort of paycheck to paycheck. And I had just bought a bulldog that previous week. Um, and so I was all right, how, how are we gonna pay the bills? So I, I sold the bulldog, um, ended up making like 500 profit on it, on Craigslist. And so then I'm like, wait a minute, 500? And it sold like within 15, 20 minutes, it's horrible. Um, but then I'm like, okay, well maybe I could do one more for another 500? I Two years later of selling dogs, and uh, that's pretty much how I made a living for the first two years. Uh, eventually, uh, I I landed on TV, Channel Ten and Channel Three, I think it was. This guy is selling dogs to people out of his trunk or out whatever. Of his trunk in the park, and we're gonna catch him. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to be that guy. So then Rodrigo was in real estate already, mm -hmm. and um, he said, dude, you you should come into this industry. And the funny part, let me yeah. clarify, yeah. I'm in real estate because of him, right? So <laughs> um, I have this design architecture job just in an office. Nine to five, and then I'm complaining. I don't want this anymore. You know the whole thing. He's like, "Hey, you should become a realtor." I'm like, "What the hell's a realtor?" Sends me a link. We're both gonna sign up, and then I go in there. I sign up, and I call him. Hey, you sign up? Did you sign up? He's like, "I was well, too chicken to jump out. in." He I was said, too chicken to jump in. I took the other job, the he secure said, money. He said, "Well, you try yeah. it out. If it works out for you, that means I'm gonna do well." I'm like, "Ah, you asshole! Like you shouldn't." Like, okay, made me sign up for no reason. So there you go. That's where he started. So technically, I want to become a realtor because my, my friend was a realtor, but then I, I took the job instead of the security, and then he took the real, real estate stuff. So long story short, you know, I get fired, selling dogs for two years, TV happens, and I tell him, I'm like, dude, I can't be doing this. Like, I'm tired. Like, TV's on my ass already. Like, they, everyone knows. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I wasn't like a low-life dog seller. I was selling to the Phoenix Suns players, Cardinals, Yeah, so you had some nice purebred bulldogs. It, yeah, right? no, I was, I was, the, I was selling to doctors, lawyers. <laughs> I was the main plug here. Yeah, but I was just like, dude, I'm, I'm done with that. Too much stress. Sometimes the puppies would get sick, whatever. And I yeah, was like, my God. So, so I, I'm, I, jo I joined real estate, and you know, it was, it was difficult. But the moment I made my first five thousand dollars assignment by accident, I didn't even know how the hell it happened. Just the guy said, I "Have this house," and one of my friends was a flipper. You want that house? And, the guy gave me a check when it closed, and I'm like, I just made five thousand. I'm like, I could do this all day. I think like <laughs> you always just sounded like the the hustler mentality, right? Oh yeah, flipping dogs, flipping houses, whatever. We're in the I was a, class, I so was a signing dog. <laughs> right. And, and, right. And the crazy part yeah. is like for me seeing this, I already had three years in real estate or two and a half years in real estate as a realtor. Right, I had the proper realtor whole thing, my mentality, you know, showing houses. I knew everything. A title did, lending did a lot of info i was big on learning the info for like when this guy came over uh i noticed that he didn't know anything like he got into real estate he got his license he got his first wholesale deal 
and he didn't even know what a wholesale deal was, but he didn't know anything. Like it was crazy. He didn't know what title did, what lending did. So that just tells you a lot about the person, right? If you're hungry and you're actually just looking out there to find an opportunity, you're going to find it. You know, you don't have to be knowledgeable and know everything, right? So. Action is so much more important. It's like, and I think you're like the ultimate example of that, of just action, action, action. If, if you want to learn how to do this, I mean, I, th I think you guys have like a two hour video. You pretty much explain your entire business. Yeah. So we don't even need to like deep too, uh, in, too much into that because um, that information is out there on how to do it. But so few people actually yeah. implement the everything, it's, the marketing, the yeah. sales, make the phone calls and, yep. and turn into deals. It, it's insane, man. Like one of, the, one of my students, he came back to me. Hey, man, uh, this stuff ain't working. OK, let's sit down. Let's go through what you've done. And we broke down his business again. And it turns out he wasn't even doing any of the stuff that we had talked about. Oh, well, if you do all of these things in this order and these amounts, then that'll turn into this. And I like, okay, cool. I'll come back. <laughs> and, and honestly, all the guys that put, you know, the training into action, they're, everyone's doing great. Like every single person that I know that is actually, you know, doing it, they're, everyone's pretty much successful. So I'm like, Dude, I, even I sometimes go back to that YouTube training I did for like two hours and I, I, I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm like even writing those myself. I'm like, what are some of these things? Um, but, but honestly, like, like you said it, it's all about action, man. Like people are going to make it with my help or without my help. Cause these are action people. They'll find it somewhere. They'll pay someone. And a lot of times they don't even need all the help. They just need one thing. Right. Like, they don't need all of the trainings, just one training and they'll run with it. Like that's our business model. We do one thing, one thing well. And we're rolling with it and we're expanding it and now you know we have this operation that allows us to to live a little bit better than before three years ago i, I like will go to some of these meetups and i'm sure you, you guys go to this, some of the meetups in town as well and you'll talk to like some of the professional learners and like they they know more about real estate probably than me you but um, they haven't done a deal and then you think like to, to the example that you just made rodrigo it's like ramon did a deal and he didn't know shit about real estate. He knew nothing and, and he made money though. And I think a lot of people, they try to learn everything instead of focusing on like fine deals, like make deals work and like hustle yep. and try to actually make money in this business when you're first starting out. And then you, you'll learn the rest through yep. transactions and, and, th and through the business. Yeah, you'll, fig you'll figure it out. Like one of our um, new hires that's been in the office, she's been going training, training, training. All of a sudden she picks up a deal yesterday out of nowhere and it just clicks and all of a sudden she's getting paid and we're looking at each other like, oh my God. But I think, yeah, just being able to pick out the people that have that hustler drive mentality, even if they don't know anything or they're struggling. My cousin, he's like our lead dispo guy. He has the thickest accent ever, man. Sometimes I can't understand what he's talking to me in English. And or Spanish. he's like, he's making, <laughs> he's making a lot of money in the company because he's, he has that hustler mentality. He builds relationships. He, he he's go. He, he he forgets so many of the steps, but he's already going towards the. He goes and picks up cashier's checks in the middle of the night to lock deals up. Wow! Like, dude, talk yeah, about hustling, being hungry, right? Yeah. You just get a couple of people around you that are that are actually efficient. You know that they actually want the same things that you do. You don't need twenty people like in, in an office, right? Uh, all you need is just a couple of people that are that you're gonna be able to be like minded. One, so you can keep working with them good environment and then they actually have the same habits that you do you know they want to get better and stuff like that so that's what's helped us a lot yeah and i saw you guys moved into that nice uh that uh building in downtown phoenix right that was one of our dreams man because i used to work at the wells fargo building what, what floor are you on We're on the 15th floor yeah, man. 15th floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so you used to work i used to work right? at the wells fargo building okay. down the street on washington third i think it was. yeah i used to be like on the 11th floor or 13th floor or something and i said one day and I would look at all the offices, the lawyers and all these people. And I'm like, one day we're going to be in one of these offices. Mark my words. It's going to happen. All of a sudden, boom, you know, forward, fast forward a couple of years. We're in our, ex, the, the people that used to be in that office were lawyers. Yeah. You went from being in a right, the small little place in the mall, in the mall to then that other office I went, um, yeah. saw you guys at. Yeah. What, what I've noticed, like, it's crazy because uh, I think we're total opposites. Like this guy, he, he likes the, the, the thrill, right? The rush. He like, he's always like. Before, like, when you were younger, he wanted to throw himself, like, with a parachute off of a plane and stuff, right? Not That's anymore. his mentality. Not, even, not anymore. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> but he changed his, his trajectory. I wanted to do this. But what I've noticed, I'm very conservative. I want security. I don't want to roll the dice. I don't want to do any of that, right? 
But what I've noticed with this guy is like, like we got the mall spot, and I thought that was a lot of money, five hundred bucks a month. I negotiated down to four. I, I was stressed <laughs> out because of that monthly. Right. But I've noticed you have to put yourself up against the wall just to um, challenge yourself. Look, you might fail, and you might not be able to pay that monthly. But now you know where you're at. You're you know if you gave your chance to grow, yourself a chance to grow. I've noticed this guy got the other building, the one where, where we did the little meetups. That the rental there was like what was a thousand. I was like, oh, it's was, yeah. was too much. But he grew immediately, and then he got the other place. He just got this one, Central Phoenix, and I noticed we grew. So every time like he takes a like a huge jump, like we keep growing just because he takes a leap of faith. And if we if it doesn't happen, then we just close it down, and then yeah. it's just whatever. Like I'm always looking for the the limit. Like where's my limit? You know, like I always try to put myself in a position to fail. Like the house that I just bought. I'm like. What if it doesn't work out? You know, what if I can't afford it? What if I thought I could? What if the bank thought I could and all of a sudden I can't? Well, at least now I'll know that I was at my limit. But what if I can't afford it? What if my I grow even more to where now, oh, it's just, just part normal kind of kind of lifestyle, you know, then you know you have everything to win and not much to lose. Because what happens if I lose? I go what if his limit's a, a $20, $20 million dollar house? <laughs> right. And he wouldn't know if he doesn't keep pushing. You have to boundary. keep keep pushing. And I always say it's like uh, living with regret or not going for it, that's tough. But like just failing, I mean, as business owners, we fail all the time. So it's like yeah. failing is not a big deal. You know, you're going to be able to build yourself back up. But if if you had those like, what ifs, what if I would have just went for it kind of bigger? So, but it's probably good you have Rodrigo to kind of keep you in check uh, well, with, with some of the stuff. Vice versa. It, I'm the other around. If I, if I, I, I would think of fear as being so he, bigger than, than actual pain. Like if I would see a big payment, I would, no, I'm not gonna do it. It's just the fear would get to me, anxiety, right? But seeing this guy putting me in horrible situations all the time, it kind of helps being around people that that are, are a bit more proactive on that side. So if you're that kind of person where you're afraid of your monthly, you want security, you want the 401k, I mean, work with somebody that's gonna drive you to the edge. And for me, I've been on way over the edge with this guy <laughs> yeah, but right. i mean at the same time i mean it, it kind of helps because he always asks me for advice hey what do you think of this he'll listen then he'll take his best uh, decision on stuff but i mean it's been working out he keeps pushing pushing the envelope right now we're doing doing dallas so, so what's like yeah what's the operation now look like uh in your office in downtown phoenix i know you have your cousin helping you it sounds like you have another acquisition yeah so we're five in the office the downtown office but we have a second office just for the acquisitions I didn't want to commingle them because they're two different styles. And the office, we have more like the dispo and admin and all that. The five people are there. So first of all, this is how it's set up. We have five dispo companies. Okay. Four uh, in four are here in Arizona, and then we just opened one in Dallas. So all those are doing really well. But then we have the acquisition side in another office um, on 59th and Indian School. They have their own little office, and they're doing their thing. So they kind of run their own stuff and I just check in, make sure the leads are coming in, uh, make sure the cold, so we have like 20 cold callers too, feeding that side of the business. But then Rodrigo handles more, more of the operations on, on this side of the business. Um, I mean, in terms of like the setup, we we don't spend too much. I mean, and I, I don't think it's really too much now. Yeah. But I think we're probably maybe an overhead, maybe we're like around 25,000 a month. That's including like paying employees and everything. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. Well, no. I mean, or, paying okay. em, well, paying the employees, we're we're a little bit higher, but the empl some of the employees are commission only, but all these guys are doing ten, fifteen a month, nice like, all day long. So they're staying happy. Yeah. So just like the the base, including like marketing and this and that, we're probably like around twenty five ish. Um, and what's yeah. what's deal flow look like for you guys? Um, so acquisitions, honestly, they probably do maybe two, three deals a month, mm -hmm. which is not too bad. I mean, especially because, I mean, some of these deals, like, um, we're like, we purchased a couple of deals where there's, you know, 100 grand equity, which is ridiculous. Are, are you, so the acquisition team, when they find a deal, are you guys typically buying them yourself and then keeping them as like a flip or The a amazing rental? ones, we, we take down okay. right away. Like, we take it down, make, we control it because we don't want to lose it. Like, we had one where yeah. we had a 100K spread, like, even if as a wholesale. So we took that thing down, like, ASAP. Uh, but... A lot of them will just wholesale too. We'll send them out to, to the VIPs for all the guys. Hey, anybody wants this? And they'll usually go pretty, fairly quickly. If that doesn't work, then we'll we'll send it to the to the dispo, and they blast it and they do their thing, and they'll usually get it sold. So your dispo side is it 
kind of a similar model to like um like Keegley or Chris Simon setup as yeah. far as like JVing and it's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty similar. I mean, the people send us their deals, like we'll add our fee on top. That's yeah. it. I, I think the difference for like the disco side is just that uh, we're really send, selling to end buyers, so we can't really sell to investors because it's it's the time of the of the fix and flipper guy. It's kind of a little bit over because right now it's a seller's market. Yeah, that means everybody's paying over market. If you get a fix and flip, awesome, right? You know, it's like for anybody. But I mean, in reality, there's so many end buyers that are picking everything up off of the MLS. So why not do the I same th thing? I think one thing that I've seen that differentiates from the other dispos, because we'll work with them too, don't get me wrong. Right. Sometimes we sell their deals, sometimes they sell our deals. Um, is that whenever we send them one of our deals, like I've gotten texts back where they say, oh, dude, this is retail. Oh, dude, you, you better put this on the MLS. And then like, we'll end up selling it at the retail price. And a lot of these guys won't want to sell our deals because we are expecting retail. And they'll say, no, I can't send that out, man. Let me know if it doesn't sell. And then we'll still end up selling it at retail. We picked up we a property yesterday, right? 300? Retail, like so many times. <laughs> and it's, it's like crazy. And they're not even ARV, let's say it's 300,000, but it's actually worth like 270 because it's not fixed up. It's right. basic. Yeah, yeah. And we'll sell like, let's say like for 330 or something. It's ridiculous. And just you having the actual, the, the buyer that does not want to fight with another 20 offers and then that, that's all it is relationships that we grow with a lot yeah. of people yeah we have a team of realtors okay only so yeah. a couple a like three realtors. or four that only work with end buyers and so they're the ones that get our deals first so, yep yeah, i have the end buyer though they have the down they'll get a cash refi later do they have 20 percent down yes they already know how to vet their buyers they know all the info we basically had to talk with many realtors hey they need 20 percent down be able to refi immediately are you no. assigning those like yeah. to traditional end buyers or no, are you? So we're selling them cash to them. Okay. Cash. They come in with down. Uh, but the thing is this, this is the, the crazy part because we're, as wholesalers, we're trained to offer 70% ARB. Yeah, yeah. 80 if it's good. Mm -hmm. Like right, like yesterday, for instance, the new person that's in the office, she got this one guy. We said he's crazy because he wanted 300. That was worth like 290. 290. Worth like 290. But we said, you know what? So you can get your training wheels going. Lock him up. Go, go to you know, house, lock them up, bring them to contract practice, get your yeah, practice yeah. in. And then we sold it. We sold it this they morning. Signed it. It's crazy. We sold it. We sold it before they even got to the office. And they signed it yesterday night and then we immediately sent it or the team sent it. And then we already had like three people interested fighting to get her. One guy was trying that. to give us like an extra 20 about what we had already sold it. Phoenix is, Phoenix is nuts, man. Right. But if it would have been us, like we wouldn't even consider it. No, yeah, you can't they want what it's worth. Get out of here. But I, I had a deal. Uh, I helped my friend out um, up in Phoenix and we locked it up for 250 and arv like when i ran it i was like this is like 275 and this was like straight crack house like <laughs> i mean there's like blood on the walls like oh. every all the the wiring was was taken out of the house like dead guy on the couch no a, 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 two days before we walked in the house they actually found a dead person in the house oh. so bad oh man bad house uh i thought i was like dude i would need this for like I'm I'm calculating my numbers in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. 200. It sold for 300. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ended up being a 50k spread. And I was like, holy shit! It's I ridiculous. was like, I don't know how people are paying this. But once again, though, if you, it, I feel included. like Phoenix is a market, though. If if you could find something right now, and, sign everything. Sign yeah, everything. That's why I tell my acquisitions. They ask me, sign it. Ask me later if it's a good deal. Like before, they would ask me, what do you think? What do you think? Like right now, they're not even asking me. Just sign everything. Whatever people just get want. Get on the contracts. Try to negotiate whatever you can. Then give them what they want, and, wherever and, you land. And, and that's the funny part, you know, at the beginning, we were, we were using our, our dispo for our own deals. We were selling our own deals at the beginning when he's doing the acquisitions. But then we found out so many, we had like a lot of wholesalers that were having trouble selling them because let's say someone else couldn't sell them. So um, they started calling us just like the Mexican Keegley, right? It was, it was a joke. <laughs> you know, you guys are the Mexican Keegley because uh, any deals that nobody wants, the crappy ones Max, with no spread. Max Jimenez started that. <laughs> Max, shout out to Max. Max. <laughs> You're like, the ones that have no spread, we'll send them to you guys. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, that's what we had to deal with. We Deals that have nothing. So yeah. in my mind, I was like, well, how do we sell these deals? Because I would feel bad if they're under contract. They want us to sell a deal that's, that nobody wants. Yeah. So we started reaching out to people, realtors, and seeing, hey, how do, can we get end buyers in here? You know, cross the line of a wholesale with the traditional. So that's what we've been, we've been working on the whole last year, just relationships, relationships. It's crazy how buyers don't even care anymore about the whole investor house. Like they just want a house. Yeah. Hey, okay, so I have this house. You're not gonna fight with anybody. I can get it for you right now. 
Are you able to do this? 20%? Because yes. no. they're already doing that same scenario in the traditional world anyways. Yeah. And so. you just, I think you guys were smart. You recognized what's happening in the market, kind of found your place in it, and you're able to just kind of work these deals to, you have to, to get bring, done. At the end of the day, you have to bring value. If you don't bring value, they're not going to send you anything. Yeah. Like Max sent us a deal the other day. It was like in the middle of nowhere by pacing little yeah. tiny house. Try to do something with it. We yeah. sold it. Like we I didn't even know how. Knew how. But then the next next week he sent us another one. Hey, you help me with this crappy All one. All those deals out in the outskirts as well. We've had so yeah. much luck with those. I mean, I guess our buyer just loves us. Um, and pacing, press all those areas as well. Yeah, like we, at, we, on we the outskirts sell of town. those too. So I, I I told him when when I saw that he had another deal, I'm like, hey, we can sell the good deals too. You know, not just the crappy yeah, ones. Don't like, just send me the shit deal. Yeah, send me good deals. We too. sell the good <laughs> stuff too, man. It doesn't have to be. And so he sent it to me like two minutes later. No, no lie, I sent out the text. I I said sold. He's like, damn it. He actually he was like, damn it. I should have given two more expensive. But 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 that's the value that you bring. We yeah. we sold the shit one, and then we got the good one. And then we sold like another one and but eventually it, you do that times 10 people and that's how you build. And, and the best part, you know, we get these deals almost at full retail, right? But then again, it's it's awesome because then you see who you sold it for, like who you helped sell it for to. Um, well, they make more money. Like the wholesale will send it to us. They make more money. Like uh, one of our buddies, he made 30K on, on his first deal. And they made like 40. And they make second. 40 on the other one. And he's like. I have a lot of room. He's in us. shock. He's like, if you guys need me, I have a, I have lot, a lot of room. room. He told us just like wow. that. We're like, look, shout keep, out, keep, shout keep out. Keep the room, man. <laughs> keep the room. You need that to keep feeding the company, right? You need the room. So for yeah. us, is we let them like just keep it all. Be greedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Through. You need to reinvest. And for it. us, we still managed to put a big fee we on still there. Made money. So uh, for us, it's like you know, let, let's shoot for gold, man. Transactions could get complicated too. Yeah. You know, we we worked with like a we JV to deal. We each made. 10k in new jersey and uh, it was a new wholesaler um you know young kid i think he was like 18 years old the transaction got kind of complicated with title issues and different things i'm, I'm not sure if he would have been able to get that across the line himself oh yeah you Sometimes know the deals will die right the deal would have died and we were able to make the deal work so some people are like damn you took like half of that i'm like that would have been no deal if he was yeah, trying to work that well, himself. Half of nothing. <laughs> right. And he was so, I mean, it changed his life. It was so cool. Like he like, he like ran to the title company uh, and like had a hold, like uh, he had 10 K in his hand. He never had awesome. money like that. That's so and it was, it was really cool to see. Like the, you gave him uh, some inspiration to keep going, right? You gave him validity to keep going. The other way, proven concept doesn't work. And then his morale goes down. He's going to take and, that yeah. 10 grand, get more cold callers, send out more mail, and then probably sell us deals or, yeah. or work with us. So, yeah. you know, everyone could win together if everyone's providing value, which I really love. I wanted to dive into, I think what's unique about you guys and what I really respect about you guys is um, how you live your life. You know, uh, you guys got to follow Ramon, especially on social media, because his life is crazy. He'll be in Las Vegas one day and then he's in Mexico on the beach. Tell the story about Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Vegas. so... <laughs> This guy goes to Vegas like spur of the moment a lot. We'll just take his wife. We might be heading to Vegas after the show. We might go to Vegas right now. I don't know. <laughs> if I didn't have a flight tomorrow, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, last week I saw Ramon. He did a spontaneous trip uh, to Vegas and I was like, fuck it. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. So I woke up after I saw that story and talked to my girlfriend and we did a quick 24 hour trip to Las Vegas, had a good time. I don't do a lot of stuff like that though. And you kind of inspired me to do it. Where do you where so do you rushed. get that from? And like, how do you think that helps you uh, with your business? Because some people would look at it like, man, he's spending a lot of money. Um, is this a smart idea, or well, is he was, being careless? Yeah, it was definitely business related. Like our head dispo guy, he said we should go to Vegas and work out of Vegas. It was his idea, and me, I'm like, uh, no, you're crazy. But then he kept on going, going. He again, we should go to Vegas, and I was like. Uh, later in the day when I got home and he's he's doing really well. He's he's, he's a beast. Like he'll sell crazy things. Um, when I got home, I booked all the flights and everything without him even knowing. And then I sent him a That's screenshot. Awesome. I'm like, hey, I guess we're going to work out of Vegas tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're literally walking around the strip with our laptops, sending deals and could like work, like literally working. And then we just took the first flight back, like the last flight back around four. So we got here around five. So we actually got home earlier than if I would have just stayed here. Yeah. So I was like, you should probably work out of Vegas more often. You got here earlier. Um, but but yeah, it was business related because one of your team members says, hey, can we, can we do that? We should, I think it'd be awesome to go grab breakfast and walk around and be productive. 
So I'm like, why not? But then a lot of, of sudden, bosses wouldn't do that. So I mean, that's how you get people to stay around by doing yeah. cool shit like that. Can you imagine someone's trying to leave and they're like, I'm never gonna get this anywhere. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll do some some crazy stuff. Like, what do you guys want to do? And like, um, all, for instance, we went we all went to Puerto Rico in December. We we're gonna go to New York, but then the whole restaurant situation happened. So we just flew everybody to Puerto Rico, and we were like in a little plane flying to little islands and stuff. Like, dude, you don't get that anywhere. Yeah, I love that. You know, you guys. Uh, you came from nothing, you built up this, you know, business making a lot of money, but you guys are enjoying it with your families and, uh, and giving it, giving back so much too. I mean, I see you on social media. It's like, you'll, uh, just yeah. be handing out massive tips to people and I'm always giving back. I mean, you know, giving back to me, uh, just, you know, giving me free advice on how to grow my business. So I, I've just been seeing you guys just always give back. Um, is that just something that you just feel like it, it always comes in, in full circle or, um, Where did that come from? It, it's insane because every time you're going to you feel like growing, you know, you need karma, good karma points. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of times, you know, it feels so good just to help people in general anyways. But I think like the the more you help, like the more good energy you, you get back from the world. Sure. And even if you don't, you help somebody happy. Like I gave this one kid, 10 year old in Mexico. I said, so put the names of somebody that you feel would deserve to be helped out. And they put the, the story of this little girl in Mexico. She didn't have a TV, she didn't have a phone, she didn't have, uh, it, like she didn't even have anything in her room, no clothes, no shoes. Yeah. And her mom was working all day. Somebody put her story there, look, she would really help. All of a sudden, like, all right, you know what? I, I called my person in Mexico, I'm like, take this person like on a shopping spree, get her a TV, That's get amazing. her a cell phone, okay. get her clothes, get her shoes, get her a dress, or get her this. All of a sudden, like the, the picture in the video she sent me back of this person that would have never gotten that in her life, it's just like very rewarding. I mean, yeah. um, now I'm doing a lot more with charity. Uh, uh, now, every at least every month or so, uh, we're we're involved with charity. We're donating to charity. Not a lot. I mean, as much as I think, as much as everybody can is good. Yeah, better than nothing, right? Like last month we donated, I think, like twenty five grand. To charity? I mean, that's amazing. Dude, man. like my goal when I started three years ago was five thousand. I, I like, remember talking month. to you, uh, yeah, a couple of years back when <laughs> we both weren't doing a whole lot in real yeah, estate, yeah. and it, it that yeah. was kind of the targets back then, you know. Yeah. So it's if I can make five grand, I'll live. All of a sudden, like to have a month, and oh, just donate five twenty five k to charity, and those are things that I don't talk about. I didn't go look. I'm about to donate to this charity, right? I like, dude, let's just do it, and we donated twelve five to one, and like another twelve down to another yeah. one, and so I'm like. Those are little things. But then all of a sudden, things start happening. Things start going well. And I think I did it also because I was in the middle of closing on my house and I was freaking out. I was freaking out. I'm like, what if it doesn't happen? And so I'm like, dude, I need to do some good deeds because I need a lot of good karma. Give it, give it out to the universe. So right? I, I'm like, here, who do you need it for this foundation? You need it for that. And all of a sudden, we close on the house. And I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Well, you, you definitely deserved it. And it's inspiring seeing just the, the way you give back and the way you guys are, are living your life. It's definitely that, that things whole, I'm picking that up whole on. That flying thing that you're saying, like traveling for, it's crazy because I think I, I see him and he travels, right? He likes to travel. But for a person that was very reserved and doesn't want to travel because it's expensive, right? It's expensive. And then you're like, oh, well, there's not enough time. Yeah. All those doubts go into my mind. But now that I look back and I actually see everything that, He's dragged my ass to like Japan, Kyoto, just being there. I, I, I've seen all these National Geographic vi videos. Gambling in Macau. You probably have just great perspective of yeah. just, just I've the world always, in general, right? I've always South loved, Korea and a I've weird always shady seen casino. The, <laughs> the whole safari thing on TV. I'm, I'm the, like the biggest thing on seeing those kinds of shows um, just to learn about different countries. Yeah. But this guy dragging me, and now fast forwarding to let's say three years later for just nonstop traveling. In my mind, I'm like so grateful because. Like you live your life, right? Your life is so much that you're going to be able to live, but then you're filling it with all these memories. Like if you are a person that, Hey, remember last year when you didn't do nothing for that month? No, you don't remember because you didn't do anything. So the purpose is you fill it up with memories yeah. and now you actually compound the memories because you can't remember something that never happened. You're like hey, last year, that month, yeah. nothing happened. Okay. How about you start filling every day with stuff yeah, or every week? Live life to the fullest every day. Yeah, I love it, man. Keep going. If if people want to find out about you guys, follow you guys, where should they hit you up? I think the best way is uh, uh, Instagram. Instagram. Uh, Ramon Wholesale Sharks is there. You can see a lot of the stuff there. 
pretty accessible through there. I was going to say um, Tinder. <laughs> or any of the gals. Find Tinder. Tinder. Or are they go on Tinder? <laughs> Anybody out there? And, uh, on that note, guys, uh, if, if, if you're looking yeah. for a date, this oh, guy. But there you go. Guys, right. um, it was a pleasure having you on uh, the Flip Lab. Keep inspiring and um, just looking forward to see what's next for you guys. Same here, man. Let me know uh, if you ever need something in your journey. We, we'd love to see what's going on. Uh, we'll, right, we'll make it happen. We'll get in there one day. I mean, let us know. Cool. <laughs> All right. Sounds good, guys. Thanks, man.